Hello everybody, welcome to the Decoding Grandmaster's Mind series. In this series, I'll bring lots of green of the well-known Grandmasters in the world. For today's episode, I have brought the game of the one and only Paul Morphy. So before going on to the game, if you are new to my channel and if you haven't subscribed it, then do take time to subscribe it and support me. So now, let's go directly to the game of Paul Morphy. So here you can see the game of Paul Morphy versus Duke of Brunswick Count. It is only of 17 moves because Morphy outplayed Duke of Brunswick Count so well. Morphy started with e4, e5, knight f3 and here we see the Philidor defense by Duke of Brunswick. So also saying that I will be annotating this game with you all and also I will be posting the games link in the description box so as you can see the whole annotated game. So here we will annotate that we can see the Philidor defense in the board or we can say here, here we can see the Philidor defense on the board. Paul Murphy played d4 going challenging the center from here we can see duke of Brunswick played bishop to g4 so many players also suggest that we shouldn't take out our bishops before our knight because we know that our knight can go to these squares and take the center not like this like this and this is the main square the knight has to go this knight will go here but for the bishop we know that Bishops have many squares to go. From here, let's say the bishop can go here. The bishop can come here or the bishop can also come here. So the bishop has three moves. Whereas the knight has only one move which is the greatest move for the knight which is this and this controlling the center. So it is advised that we should go with the knight because the bishop can go to three moves and after the game it can also be that if we have played bishop to g4 we have to retreat our bishop back to d7. So, but Duke of Brunswick directly played bishop to g4 because the idea was firstly to pin the knight. Yes, the bishop pins the knight to the queen. And also indirectly, can you see that uh, the bishop to g4 moves put pressure on the d4 square. Why on the d4 square? Because you can see that the knight is the protector of the d4 square. And if we insert a null move from here, so it's black to play once again. So from here we can take the d4 square, d4 pawn. If the knight takes, then it's a blunder because the queen is gone. And if the queen takes it, let's say like this, then we take the knight, pawn takes it, and here we have doubled pawns. So this was the idea of Duke of Brunswick. So this is why he played bishop to g4. Paul Morphy replied with the move D captures e5 the pawn so here we have the first question of the day it is black to play and you have to play like duke of Brunswick. can you play it yes so from here we have two moves d captures e5 as well as bishop captures knight which is the great move mostly 90 percent of the uh, people here would be telling that d captures e5 is the move but this is a blunder because from here it will continue with queen captures queen, king captures queen and knight captures the pawn. Now white is a pawn up and also it is attacking this f7 square giving a fork like this and also the bishop. So white is better here. So we will annotate it here and write white, white is completely better. Here because white is a pawn up as well as there are threats coming up and also you can see the position all the white pieces are coming here threats coming up and the pieces are also 
developing so this is why pawn takes pawn was not a great choice but first we had to take bishop captures knight so after that queen captures knight and then pawn takes pawn so this was the same which happened in palm of his game but here when we analyze it you can see that queen captures bishop is also a good move but the great move is g captures bishop because after pawn takes pawn queen takes queen king takes uh, queen and here we can see the move f4 if the pawn takes f4 then bishop takes it and you can see uh, two points are exchanged but you can see black can't castle from here because it is once moved in the game and also this lovely bishop has this diagonal which uh, it is very great in this diagonal so from here I'll favor white and if black doesn't take the pawn and defend it like knight to c6 then also after pawn takes uh, knight takes and after not like this after f4 uh, white's position is good not better but it's good and after knight to f6 knight to f6 pawn takes knight takes here also there is a trap by white you can see bishop coming to g2 attacking the knight and also there is an x-ray on the b7 pawn x-ray means that this knight will go somewhere like say here and then we can take the pawn so the only move to defend this pawn to come here so as to defend the knight as well as this pawn but here comes the move b4 attacking this knight and after the knight is moved we can take this pawn by the bishop and the rook is also lost here in the corner so this was a great opportunity by paul morphy to take by the g pawn and not by the queen but it's okay g, uh, queen takes bishop is also a great move so after continuing we'll see pawn captures pawn and here comes a good move by paul morphy that is bishop to c4 attacking the f7 square by the bishop and by the queen so first let's annotate here that g captures f3 this was a better move which paul morphy could have played to out play black and also i'll give a good move sign which plus minus because white is winning from here so from here we can see pawn cap spawn bishop coming here with a queen attacking on the weak f7 square as we all know that the f7 square is the weakest for the black set here the two main defenses that black can play is knight to f6 cutting off this dike this uh, queen to the f7 square by placing it in between or we can also see queen to f6 there are also players playing queen to f6 here now can you tell it is a good move or a bad move okay it is a bad move right here in this position but in some positions they are good move the plan to this is when the queen takes a queen then we can take the queen with our knight with a tempo so our knight is developed as well as this pawn is also attacked therefore we are exchanging our queens like this but here it is a bad move this is because the queen jumps to b3 right here attacking on the f7 square as well as attacking on the b7 square with the queen from here we can play the stunning move which is knight to c3 with an idea of playing knight to d5 attacking this queen also giving some knight for traps here also after that we can bring out our bishop this dark square bishop and play the whole game from here the main move would be c6 so as to defend the square so the knight can't come but from here we could have played bishop to g5 sacrificing the bishop and from here if the queen takes the bishop then this f7 pawn is hanging the king can't take it because of the queen which is protecting it now the king has to come on d8 now the rooks joins the attack here note we can't castle 
because the queen's dagger is right here so we can't castle so the bish, uh, the rook comes in the attack and also you can see that all the pieces are in the attack the queen will join after that if the uh, king goes like this to c7 you can see that this piece is lost because bishop would take this piece rook takes and then queen takes and we get a free rook and like this so the only move is knight to d2 and then also we can take it and there are so many threats right here so queen to f6 was not a right choice here duke of once we saw this move and hence he played knight to f6 uh, cutting off the uh, square of the queen from here pawn of he continued with queen to b3 with a double attack on the b7 square as well as on the f7 square duke of once replied by queen to e7 and from here Paul Murphy played a uh, knight to c3 a good move with the same idea that first we'll pin this knight like this to the queen and then we can play the move knight here to attack both the pieces a good move but the better move that is completely winning from here is can you find it can you find it? the second question from here can you find a better move from Paul Murphy's side that is white right here Okay, let's see. From here, the main move is bishop captures f7 check, giving up the bishop. After this, we come to queen captures f7. From here, we'll take the b7 pawn by the queen. You can see this rook is trapped here. Only way to save this rook is some tactical things like the bishop can come here. I can see this because after this, if I take the rook, then castles is coming. After the, because castles leads to some threaten to the queen because the queen can't take this square because the bishop is here can't ca take this can't come here can't come here so queen is sort of cramped so this is not a great move but after bishop coming here we can play queen to c8 directly out playing black and the black king has to go to d7 e7 and this rook is hanging so this was the golden opportunity of Paul Morphy to outplay Duke of Brunswick. But Paul Morphy missed it. It's okay. But Paul Morphy played a better move. Which, which was right here. You can see. After the queen comes here. He played the better move. Which is knight to c3. Just like this. So this idea is clear. I guess this idea is clear to everyone. From here, Duke of Brunswick replied with c6 with the same idea to defend this d5 square. From here, we can see the great move that is here. The great move, bishop to g5, pinning this knight and then this move. So now you can see in this position, you can see that black is type of in a zugzwang because zugzwang means that Black doesn't have so many moves and is forced to play some move. Here you can see the queen is in zugzwang because it can't come here because of the bishop. It can't come in these three squares because then after castles or after uh, rook here, let's see, then all the pieces of white are into the attack and then black is feeling very bad. So white can't play, black can't play the queen. Also, you can see the black can't play the bishop right here because it is cornered by the queen and also the pawn, so it can't come out. This lonely knight can't move. It can't come to d7 because this pawn will hang, the queen will take. And it also can't come to a6. It can't come to a6 because after bishop takes knight, pawn takes, uh, there are double pawns as well as all the pieces are coming into attack. So this is a type of zugzwang. We will annotate here. Bishop g5 is a very good move because it is placing the black side in a type of zugzwang. In a type of zugzwang. Okay. So it is a great, great move, I'll give it a good move exclamation mark. So now we see the only move that black 
could play to survive is to play b5 but this is a serious blunder can you spot it can you spot the move by big white yes the move is knight captures pawn sacrificing the knight if the pawn captures it then bishop captures check and from here the knight has to come in between because if the bishop if the king comes here then the rook comes in and then bishop captures and all the threats are coming in so the knight has to come in between and from here castles is the great move played by paul morphy attacking on the knight with the rook and the bishop duke of brunswick hoping for some last minute chances played rook to d8 but rook captures one more sacrifice by paul morphy calculated so move ahead rook captures knight rook captures from here the other rook joins and duke of brunswick was completely lost the last chance was to play queen to e6 hoping that the queen can be exchanged and in the end game you can see that since white has sacrificed many pieces black is winning in the end game but black forgot that white is paul morphy and not any other player so here came the second move knight captures and this is the final position the final tactic which i'll like to give you for the day if you find this then you are just like paul morphy can you find it so the move that i like the most from here is queen to b8 with a check giving up the queen my the knight can take the queen because the king can't go anywhere it can't come here it can't come here because the bishop is there taking this diagonal the knight captures the queen and here comes the last move rook to d8 and it's a lovely check made by paul morphy so going behind i'll annotate this move and we'll write this was the final nail on nail on the coffin by hammered by hammered by the great one and only paul So this was the game. Let's see where I missed to annotate here. You could see this was this was played so that the knight, so that the knight can't join the attack by going. on to d5 also there are many variations in the game between that we covered that paul morphy could have played but this was a lovely variation from e4 from the filler defense to the rook d8 checkmate was the entire game of paul morphy with duke of brunswick so With this I would like to say that how was this session and how is the series did you like it comment in the comment section and also this entire game with the entire also many annotations are left to do I'll do it and the entire game with the link I'll be pasting it in the description box and also I'll be putting medals in between where there are questions by me asked to you so you can practice it very nicely so with this i'll say two words to end my lecture today stay safe and play chess goodbye